Hello Dragon Ball Infinity, I am your DBI admin Eichenbon, and today we're going to start a new series that I'm going to call the RP Spotlight. And what I want to do with the RP Spotlight is to talk about some of the characters in our cast uh, that are, um, and, and, and basically just give them more time. Give, give myself the opportunity to kind of talk about them in more detail and depth, say the things that um, I think that are important about them, and to talk about the, the contributions they have made to the channel, um, and, and and just generally kind of, kind of just really give the player themselves who is running these characters uh, the the opportunity to hear uh, hear my my thoughts about about the the all the work that they've done in a way that is uh, separated from an actual role play log because I feel like in a lot of I feel like a lot of the time when I'm responding to a role play log I think some of my feedback can come off as like over overly negative in certain ways or uh, is you know is de very dependent on what actually occurs and I don't think that my overall feelings about the character can get communicated because I'm just trying to respond to the words on page um, so yeah so that's what that's my hopeful goal with the roleplay spotlight and I want to start with Saru because I think that Saru has made some huge major contributions to the roleplay channel with the characters that he has run uh, especially Hypo and Fusion. Craft is a character that I'm excited to see more of but will have a lot less to say uh, in general but yeah so this is uh this is going to be the role play spotlight for seru or for hypo fusion and craft and we're going to start in that order we're going to start talking about hypo and i don't think that i don't think there are words enough that can express how important of a character hypo is to our setting and this era of role play i think that hypo is in the top echelons of heroic characters on the channel. I would say that he is actually like the default hero of the story, or at least the, the character who is holding up the most uh, of, the, of the progress towards, uh, towards what I, I want to call kind of like the, the overarching narrative of Dragon Ball Infinity right now. I think this character is absolutely hero. Does he have flaws? Of course he has flaws. Um, but he is a character that is working towards those flaws and represents kind of like the perfect I like Dragon Ball ideal of uh, hard work and determination will, you know, bring you closer to your to your goal of becoming the strongest. Um Hypo is a very heroic character, and Seru himself has brought so many people to the channel through Hypo. Um, so many of his friends were brought to the channel and became uh, members here, whether uh, long-term or short-term. Uh, doesn't really matter so much as just the fact that he brought so many people with him. And, and we got to experience him first through Hypo, and especially like the, uh, the saga of the Frozen Lightning Spear. Um, there is a wonderful video that was created by Cordio on his own YouTube channel. I will try to link it in the description for this video where Cordio outlines everything that happened and his own thoughts and feelings about the overall arc. Um, so I don't need to repeat any of the information he did because he did such a wonderful job kind of uh, capsuling it. And um, I just think that Hypo is a wonderful character. I think that he's very important. Again, I would say he's in, like, the top three. Like, in, within the Dragon Ball Infinity era of fiction right now, he's, like, he's got to be Goku or Vegeta to some degree. Like, he's a very important character, and many characters orbit around him. Um, and, again, he's, he's just connected to so many. Uh, and that's... That has to do with the, the plot that he wrote himself, and that also has to do with him uh, taking my advice, which was after he'd finished The Shattered Atmosphere, to, uh, to go to Earth, where you know that, that was around the time of Yuletide, and now he's been on Earth, he's gone to the Tower of Korin, and through doing that, I mean, I think Hypo has just about met every character in the setting. There's, there's some one-off characters he's obviously not encountered, but for the most part, he has interacted with every powerful character in the setting at this point. And I think he is the only character that has done that. Um, I think that he is, like, what I would call sort of a hinge character 
to almost everyone in the setting. Every single major character knows Hypo's name and knows him by reputation. And Hypo is like a perfect Dragon Ball character. I mean, he is the epitome of hard work and determination gets, you know, you know, brings you to power. He and I think his, I think the best arc that he's been a part of was the Everjail arc. It was so good, in fact, that I made an entire area in game to represent it because I love the concept of it. I love the entire idea, and it lended itself so easily to the mud. Like you know, I remember like kind of when it was finishing, just going like, man, like this this needs to be in the game. Like this is like he he whether he meant to do it or not. Like he wrote something that I can so easily translate to this game. Um, and I'd love to add more areas surrounding that idea. Like the frozen lightning spear itself would make a really good, you know, early area before the Everjail. Um, and, and if, and to go a step further, I would say that his best role play, the very best role play that he has done, I have seen on hypo has to be, and, and I forget the name of it. Um, I think it's, uh, I think it's something like, uh, without words, um, because it's the it's the role play that Hypo has where he and Raijin are where he's leaving Master Raijin at the Everjail, and he you know he breaks down and he cries and he becomes very vulnerable and he you know he calls Raijin his like surrogate father and that piece is like so powerful. Um, I talked about it like I have a video on that role play and I just remember after I finished reading it just feeling like this is such a tender such a personal moment. I think the way that I described it was that it felt like felt like I was intruding on it. It felt like this was something just between him and this master. It's like, and it felt it felt weird for me to be reading it because it's like such a personal moment, and like there's so much emotion in it, and it just was amazing. It was really probably one of the best logs I read in 2023. Um, genuinely, if you haven't read it, you should go back and read it and. And if you like it, you should go back and see all the different interactions that led up to that moment because it wouldn't have been the same if if Seru, the writer, hadn't built up the relationship between him and that character. Um, and yeah, I, I think that Hypo is an incredibly important character on the channel. Again, I would say that he's in like he's in like the Goku slash Vegeta spot for Heroes of the Verse. And I'm excited for what he's going to continue to do with this character and especially as it as it gets closer and closer to sort of outright confrontation with the empire and his eventual goal to unseat Ymir um i do think that hypo is a character that has flaws but they're reasonable understandable flaws there are things that anyone could trip themselves into and i know that in a lot of my videos i tend to kind of pick apart that because otherwise he's a perfect hero and so I try to, uh, in a lot of videos, I, I tend to pick on those things that I see coming out, those flaws, because without them, he is sort of invulnerable in a way. He's a very powerful character. He's a very powerful martial artist. I'd say that he's, uh, he's definitely in like the top echelons of, of combatants on the, uh, on the channel. And I think his kit, like the abilities that he's created for him, for hypo are some of the the most useful the most cool uh, they come across in a very interesting way that is like narratively pleasing to read um, I, I think that he's got a really solid character with hypo and I really like it um, I really like hypo I think uh, if I am worried about anything with the character it's just that uh, it's just that if he does win, if he does eventually take over or, you know, break down Ymir's empire, um, that I'm afraid that it takes away a villain from the setting that kind of a lot of people sort of rely on as their default baddie. Like, that's my worry. It's just that, like, the setting will be will be missing a, a very powerful villain if he succeeds. And so, like, that's a... Like that's a compliment in a way is to say that like yeah like I, like I think you're more than capable of of taking him down. I think eventually you absolutely will. Um, I think you could. I think you could even put up a pretty good struggle right now with the right people, and the right circumstances and things. Like it, like I think it's possible for Hypo to win this fight or at least defeat Ymir, like 
right now with if he had the right setup. Um, I just don't know where that leaves the roleplay setting. I don't know. Uh, I don't know how we can replace Ymir and the the kind of the tyrant empire idea uh, without him. But that's something we'll have to figure out because I think that will eventually be where the story is leading. Um, so yeah, I think that Seru with his work with Hypo, I like. I don't. I don't think there's anyone else who's done as much work towards bringing new people to the mud, and I don't think that there are any other characters right now that quite stand at the, on the same pedestal of Hypo as kind of the default hero of the setting. Um, so, yeah, I mean, absolutely, absolutely great character. It's a, you know, it's it's very very well done, and it's it's fun it's fun to interact with. It genuinely it is. I don't I don't think anybody that I've I don't think I've seen anybody who's ever had a problem with having a fight with Hypo. I think everyone has enjoyed their battles with him. Um I've only gotten the one fight with Mosin and he was kind of hold he was definitely was holding back on that one. So I would love to get more fights in with this character with some of mine um with Zofu or Koshiro or really anybody because I'd like to I'd like to play more a little bit with his abilities and see how it feels on chat. Now let's talk about Fusion. Um, and the image that I use uh, is a reference to, to Fusion. Uh, I think it's undeniable that Gyro from One Punch Man is a major influence for this character uh, in everything that they've kind of done. Um, I loved the introduction for Fusion, and I think that Fusion is... Uh, also a very important character the setting we pretty much spent all of last summer kind of using him as the villain for the Nova Sanctuary arc and I don't think that that arc would have been anywhere near as fun and have had made me want to push my character uh, my own specific character to the uh, to all the links that I went through to kind of uh, you know quote unquote take him down uh, if it had just been some NPC or some villain, like I think Fusion is a wonderful character to have running around the setting, and and I think he is our our best character played villain. Um, absolutely, I mean, there's no question. No one really compares to Fusion in terms of like strength and fear. Like, there's so many videos where I've talked, like, just even mentioned kind of haphazardly uh, what and who Fusion is, and. Um, I really genuinely do like this character. I think that it's a very cool character. Since their introduction, I really, really like them. And I still continue to like Fusion. I think that Fusion also has flaws, uh, not as a person necessarily, but a little bit more narrative flaws in that uh, in that it's hard to gauge some of his actions um, based off of the way that he often talks and speaks and because we so we so rarely get a chance to see like the the interior of the character but he is a kind of looming shadow a sort of looming threat over the setting that like it's very hard to sort of ignore um he's a he's kind of in the background of everyone's mind especially now that he's tier two and he's working his way up to tier three like the stronger and stronger he gets Every character has to kind of have in the back of their head, or at least I do when I'm I'm doing any character that I'm making. It's like you know, I you know I think about like you know in comparison to in comparison to this villain that was made, and I think the viciousness of this character is really present. I you know even when I did like the DBI like tier list or whatever, I said that Fusion is like definitely in like the the S tier of like strength and martial arts prowess and stuff like just the way that Seru has written this character makes him out to be incredibly dangerous and that's kind of the juxtaposition that I'm talking about where it's like it's hard to see him have fights with people like Ariel or Kalo and it not and him to sort of hold back a little and um not to say that it's wrong like you know I'm uh, I'm infinitely gracious you know gra grateful that Seru is is capable of running a villain with these kinds of motivations and is capable of having a character who is this frightening and scary and powerful but also is able to you know hold back and not just slaughter people just for the sake of doing it kind of thing which is you know something that I've struggled with on my own you know quote unquote villain Zofu 
so he definitely handles those situations better. It's just a little bit harder to like compare his motivation versus the actual actions that he does, at least for right now. Um, but I think that Fusen is a very important character to the setting, and I think he'll only grow more and more important as time goes on, and especially as we get to learn more about him and as he becomes more powerful. Um, I'd really like to see him and Galvis spend more time together kind of forming a, a like a collective of villainy or something. I, I do think that Fusen needs at least a few friends, either as enemies or villains or friends with, you know, good aligned people, like maybe even Ariel, um, who he's capable of, like, you know, like, Ariel might even be, like, a really good option for it, actually. Like, somebody who he knows is not really a threat to him or a threat to anyone, but that he keeps in contact with to just sort of have someone that he can turn to to express himself and to explain his motivations to, uh, even if he knows that they're hypocritical to what he's doing, but just that, uh, but doing it just because because he is human and because it is hard like even if we want to do things we don't always necessarily know for certain that we're doing the right thing um i think that would be a really good turn for him actually whether it's whether it's ariel or whether it's like koshiro who's you know tried to build or establish a relationship with him or or anyone really i think that would be useful for the characters just to have maybe one or two good guys that like you know, he's not interested in fighting. You know, it could be um, very much like the Sukuna mentality where, like, he finds he finds them, like, he, he sees them kind of not as threats. Like, they're sort of boring to him, and so he there's no reason to cut them down because they're not really in his way. And so he can, he can express himself a little bit more. I think that's the only thing that Fusen is missing is that just – just a few characters that he can turn to and have just a normal conversation with, you know, regardless of who he is, regardless of what his ambitions are. Uh, I think that character does just need a kind of outlet to tell his story to us with. Um, but otherwise, like, yeah, I think that Fusion is an amazing character. He is really important to the setting. He's really interesting. He's really cool. And I think his introduction to the setting is one of the best introductions I've ever seen uh, to any character. I, I don't, like, I can't on the top, like, the only, the only comparison might be, and, like, I, I know this probably sounds like I'm just giving myself a lot, uh, too much credit, but, like, I think that Nath is the only character that has had an introduction as explosive and interesting as Fusen's was when he showed up on channel. Like, genuinely, the moment that Fusen showed up, I was super interested in that character. And, uh, and I'm, you know, like, I read everything that, that comes out of Fusen, like, very voraciously. Um, because it's just, it's just cool. It's very compelling. It's a, you know, it's a villain that you kind of want to see succeed. And a lot of my commentary may come off as, uh, you know, kind of belittling it a little bit just because I'm so worried. I'm so worried that he's going to kind of step over the line and that someone's going to be forced to kind of take him out, you know, maybe someone stronger than him or something. Um, not, It's never happened. It's not happened so far, and I think that speaks volumes to how good of a writer Sarah is that he's able to create this villain that, like, you know, even I on Koshiro, like, you know, um, I I wasn't just going out of my way to to be the hero when Koshiro spared him. Like I would have been upset if Fusen had died. Like I I didn't want him to be gone. Um, I might have sent him to the lockers, but I didn't want that character to be like gone. And I didn't want to kill him because I want to see what happens. You know. Um, so I'm I'm super excited to to see Fusen come on the chat channel and uh, you know to come back, especially after the lockers. Um, I, I do think that uh, I do think that he does have to kind of make make good on his promises to kill the metahumans, which can kill, which includes player characters. And I think the best people for him to reach out to for that kind of fight would be like myself and Rizian and maybe Genesis, because we have a lot of like extras, a lot of floaters that we could use to show off his lethality with. Um, whereas other other people on the channel don't necessarily have as many people they can kind of like throw under the bus uh but yeah him taking out like a strong like especially a strong or a very important character like whether it's koshiro or uh mosin or cornell or even genesis like 
Um, I think I think that is kind of necessary for the progression of this character to show just how really strong he is. And I don't mind, you know, I've, I've said it before, I don't mind putting my character under the bus, maybe not easily, but uh, but for it to, to showcase that side of him. And the other last kind of final note for Fusion is that Fusion has mostly taken on people who are either the same strength of him or weaker. The one time he took on someone stronger was Kosho and he lost. I would like to see Fusion in the future take on another big hard challenge, someone stronger than him. Um, and I kind of, and I don't want this to become a, I don't want to spend too much time on this, but like I kind of wanted to show him when I fought Hypo with Swan Song how it can be done. Like, if you're smart about it, if you can, uh, you know, like, th there's no reason to shy away from taking on the big threats. Um, as long as you come into it with, like, a plan, you know, you can, like, it's it's perfectly reasonable that someone like Fusion could take down, say, Nova. Um, he's certainly got the skills for it, and if he's smart about the combat, I think he could beat uh, Nova or Endon or Genesis or something. So, for the future, that's what I would really like to see. I would really like to see Fusion... Uh, really take someone down, either whether it's the same level, maybe someone like Soliath or again like Koshur, uh, Koshuro, or or go for someone stronger than him and see what that fight looks like. Um, Fusion versus Nova would be a hell of a fight. I would love to see that. Um, yeah, uh, and then finally we're going to talk about craft a little bit. Uh, when Saru made craft, he created like an entire like craft world for uh like full of like magical users and like this teleporting city and uh, i've only seen a few logs from craft he's only done like maybe two or three and he did appear at yuletide very briefly um i really liked craft i thought that craft is a really cool idea and i especially liked it when him and thousand were working together i'd love to see them team up and do like an entire arc you know, based in um, in Zahiron, and I would love to be there with Zofu, or even to like train Craft, or or even just interact with Craft a little bit more with Zofu. I thought that what he created with that character was was so neat that we actually turned it into kind of the the lore for Vinians on the chat channel. Um, and I, I just think he did a really good job, and I think all of the logs that he wrote for Craft were just really neat. And I I do really want to see more of that character. Um, uh, I don't have much more comments for Kraftus because it is kind of a newer character, but I, I do think that it it has a lot of potential, and I'd like to see Sarah work on it a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so this has been the RP Spotlight for Seru or for Hypo, Fuse, and Kraft. Uh, I can't express enough just how uh, important these characters have been to the setting and how... Um, how they are, how big they are in the story of the era, and I think they're going to. I think all three of them are going to continue to grow and become more and more important and more ingrained. And I, uh, you know, whether it, whether it's being one of the the titular heroes of the era or being one of its most uh, infamous villains, I think that we can all appreciate and and say for certain that Seru has marked himself as like a very important role player to our setting and someone who deserves a lot of credit for continuing to build stories, to NPC for other people, and to uh, just provide a lot of entertainment for us and to keep things keep things exciting and moving um, here on Dragon Ball Infinity. So, uh, wonderful job, Sarah. Thank you so much. I will see you guys on the chat channel.